you notice that the price of fuel recently is getting completely out of control? Well, what if I told you in this video, I show off a method for making diesel at only 83 cents per gallon. Sounds crazy, right? Well, let me explain. Fundamentally, diesel is made up of these funny little things called hydrocarbons. They're chains of carbon with these little hydrogens on the side, and uh, thus they're called hydrocarbons. Now, in order to get hydrocarbons on the cheap, gasoline and diesel are actually pretty good ways of getting really cheap hydrocarbons. They are like bottom of the barrel. But if you're creative, there's a sort of cheaper method. And that cheaper method is uh, used vegetable oil from uh, fast food restaurants. Now, if you've ever been to a fast food restaurant, obviously they have lots of fryers, lots of oil. But if you use a little social engineering, there's a way that you could get this oil for 100% free. So what I did was I went to my local fast food restaurant and I said, hey, can I get some fry oil? Cause I want to sort of like turn it into diesel. It's, it's this whole project. And they're like, okay, this guy's insane. But they actually gave me some. So I have this uh, fry oil. It's, um, it smells like French fries. It's, uh, it's very, very greasy. So to clean it up, we're going to sort of pour it through this filter and that gets rid of the little uh, French fry bits. Um, once it's all clear, we have mostly pure oil. Uh, and w this oil is made up of hydrocarbons, sort of like I said before, uh, but specifically they are in the form of triglycerides. Triglycerides are called that because they've got the, uh, this is glycerin, and then they've got the three little um, ides. <laughs> but basically uh, we could maybe sort of use this as diesel fuel for certain applications. Um, some of the first diesel fuel was actually uh, peanut oil. But a lot of modern diesel engines uh, don't really like to run on it and it will like smoke like crazy and it's probably not the best for our engine. So we're going to turn this into something that's a little more usable. The current problem is that the triglyceride molecule is way too big. Because it is so large, the molecules sort of drag on one another and that makes the whole thing very viscous. On top of that, it doesn't give off a lot of vapor because the molecules are very big and they don't like to just sort of jump off. If we made the molecules smaller, they'd sort of jump and vaporize and create lots of fire. So in order to make this molecule smaller, we're going to break off pieces. And for those of you who don't know, these carbon-carbon uh, bonds, not very easy to break, but these little esters here, they're called esters, the little, I'll circle them. These esters are very easy to break. So to do this, we're going to add a whole bunch of something with alcohol in it. The alcohol will come in to the ester and sort of replace the alcohol that was already there on the glycerin. Eventually this will happen over and over again and we'll be just left with glycerin and uh, all of these little sort of diesel molecules. Now technically hydrocarbons usually don't have little esters in them, but these esters are okay. We can, we can have a little ester there. It's not that big of a deal. So what alcohol are we going to use to sort of replace this that's really cheap and available? I've seen lots of people use methanol, which is an option but I wanted to go as cheap as possible. So I went to my local gas station and I picked up, um, and uh, yes, this is, not, this is not the proper jug for this, I apologize. I picked up some E85 ethanol fuel. Now, I don't know where you live, but where I live, uh, E85 fuel is about $2 a gallon, which is pretty cheap. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than diesel, and you only really need one part of the E85 to four parts vegetable oil. Uh, and also, ideally, you want to get E85 during the summer because that's when they give you the most ethanol for some reason. So I add the E85 to the oil in a ratio of about 4 to 1, and I add sulfuric acid. Now, you can use this liquid drain cleaner sulfuric acid, or you can use this solid drain cleaner sodium hydroxide. Um, choose your pick. Both are just very readily available drain cleaners. I chose sulfuric acid because it maybe mixes a little better because it's a liquid. Um, uh, both should probably be all right. Then we heat it and we mix it for about an hour. Um, this whole setup with all the uh, nerd chemistry glassware is maybe a little excessive, but you get the idea. It's mixing and it's, it's sort of heating. I heated it to about 70 degrees, uh, maybe a little less. You don't, want the, you don't want things to start boiling, but you want to get it nice and warm. Kept it there for about an hour. And then I took it off heat and I let it sort of settle. Now, we had it sit and settle for about a day. It actually took a very long time. I didn't expect it to take this long, but there we go. So what are these different layers? Well, it's basically, uh, they separate on polarity and density. So the stuff with all the wild oxygen groups uh, and things like that, 
That stuff is usually pretty polar, so it's going to stick at the bottom. That's like the glycerin and the sulfuric acid. But all this carbony stuff with its lack of oxygens just sort of thrown around is very non-polar. So it'll separate into a separate layer. And we know that the top layer is the diesel because I told you so. And also because it's less dense. So that's why it floats on top of the uh, glycerin. Now, if you're concerned about the glycerin at the bottom, if you use sulfuric acid, you need to use a base to neutralize it. You can add some baking soda until it stops bubbling. Or if you use sodium hydroxide, you can add sort of like lemon juice and that'll sort of neutralize the base. So here we test out the flammability. We've got the oil on the right and we've got the diesel on the left. And you'll see the oil on the right is really hard to light because the molecules are so big it is so difficult to get them to vaporize and ignite. But if you compare that to the diesel, wow, the diesel really likes to go. The vapors just sort of fly off there and they create a big old flame. Also, you can see that the diesel is a lot more thin. It's not very viscous like the original oil. So for the final test, I don't really have an engine that I feel comfortable testing this in, but I do have a little diesel heater for my camper that I sort of showed off in the last video. And the diesel heater sort of takes in diesel and then it burns it. And you can see here, I put the diesel in, then we have the heater running and there, there's hot air coming out, which is a good sign, but that doesn't mean a clean combustion. Um, I saw this video online where somebody tried to use just pure vegetable oil in their uh, diesel heater and uh, it didn't work. Shout out to this guy for uh, sacrificing his diesel heater for science, um, that didn't really work. But if we look at our exhaust underneath the camper, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that, oh look, the uh, the smoke is non-existent. It burns very cleanly and it um, it actually smells, <laughs> smells like french fries kind of, the exhaust. Um, which is surprising, but what I find more surprising is it doesn't really smell like gasoline or diesel. Like it doesn't smell like a gas station. It just smells like fry, french fries. There was a little bit of gasoline in there from the E85. Uh, but it didn't really make much of a difference because I couldn't smell it. So, yeah, uh, diesel. It was like 83 cents per gallon. Uh, very affordable. The problem is you got to find a source of vegetable oil, which is a little more social engineering than I'm usually comfortable with. But hey, we did it and we got about 500 milliliters of diesel. I'm just going to run it all night. I'm just going to take a nap in the camper. And uh, if I wake up the next morning and post this video, then hey, you'll know, <laughs> you'll know that it worked and that it didn't uh, burst into flames. So, yeah. And uh, to finish up, let me just say, this is a very crude process. If you want this to be very clean diesel that would run in like a proper truck, you really want to filter out all the little french fry bits. And you really need to rinse the diesel at the end with water to get all the soaps and stuff out. And then you've got to dry it. You could use molecular sieves, which are reusable. So if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment and I will try to answer it. And uh, also uh, subscribe and uh, do that other stuff, yeah.